hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel and today we are in canada at the university of york or simply york university in search of bsc that's bachelor's master's and phd funded opportunities so today we have bachelor's master's and phd funding at york university in canada so it's quite simple to search for your course and search for funding on this website and i will be taking you through the simple process so this is the international student page for york university for undergraduate courses and um, soon we'll also go to um phd masters funding and then we'll be talking about things like english requirements as well for both undergraduate and for graduate studies so stay with me as i take you through the process so let's begin with undergraduate so when you get to this page of course i'll be leaving a link to this um, page in the description box of this video so when you get to this page simply click on the kind of um, high school certification you got so for instance most people in west africa take this exam the West African Senior Secondary School Certificate Exam or the National Examinations Council. So this is taken mostly in countries like Nigeria, Ghana, and Syria, Leone, Liberia. So check for your own qualifications there. So I've clicked on this one and then choose the course you intend to study. It's a very long list as you can see. So go through it carefully and see the one that catches your interest, that aligns with your future goals. So let's click on city regions planning, for instance. So immediately you click on your course and then select the kind of high school qualification that you have. This um, website will bring out the requirements, the documents you need to submit. So for this course, you require the West African Senior Secondary School Certificate. And it takes you down here to other things you might provide. So you need a certificate of this exam, these exams, and the grades you should get, C4 to C6. And then also tells you that you need your like your high school transcripts and other things that you need. So this is quite basic for those who studied in West Africa. So you can, of course, do this for your own region, for your own country. But this is good news for those who studied in West Africa because it's like the basic entry requirements even into universities in most countries in West Africa. So this is a good one. But then it says meeting the minimum requirements does not guarantee admission. So we know that there will be lots of competition. So just getting the minimum requirements alone wouldn't guarantee a space. So you have to be like a driven student, have very good results that would put you in front of the line in the first place. So what about funding? How do you fund the studies? It's not easy to study as an international student abroad, let alone in Canada. So how do you fund your studies? And there's good news here. So just go to financial aid. There is good news. There are lots of funding for international students at York University. So if you check this first segment, there are quite um, a bit of little funding here and there. A thousand Canadian dollars, two thousand, some forty thousand. This is quite good. But then if you scroll down with little, then you see the very big ones. The very big ones. You can see this one, a hundred and eighty thousand Canadian dollars and they'll give you 45,000 every year for four years and look at this one 120 this one is 80 these are the big ones you want to look at so a combination of both these ones uh, we saw earlier here and this one's down here would help as well and the application um, process is quite simple so while you apply for admissions and one of those courses we looked at you have to come back here and apply for funding as well. Some some places would um, or some scholarships would tell you that oh you don't need a different um, you don't need a different application for funding like these small ones we saw here say no award application required. But if you go down here to the bigger ones we looked at these ones, it is said that you have to apply here 
and the application window opens 1st of December. There are other bits of information here. You can just cool down and read on your own. When it opens, when it closes, the documents you need to provide when you click on this um, button. So remember, you have to first apply for one of those courses we saw, get an application number, and then by December 1st, come here and apply for a scholarship. You do not need to wait to be admitted in one of those courses before you apply. But of course, you need admission to get a scholarship. But do not wait um, for your department to contact you that you've been admitted before you come here to apply for a scholarship. And watch out for the application deadline. So you can see here, huge funding funds your studies throughout the academic your academic years not just one academic year but four of them as you can see in these big funding particularly targeted as at international students like you so more on admissions let me just take you back to admissions requirements so now you can go to the website of this course so we chose cities regions planning so let's go to this course website and see if we can get additional information so this is it you go to the course website you're meant to digest the different kinds of information written here because even this info here would help you in putting your application together in the first place so in case you are told to write an essay on why you want to join the department summarizing some of these things or seeing how you connect these things written on this uh, website to your own goal and your aspirations would help give you a competitive edge at all it shows that you've done your background research on the department so it's good to read all these bits but for the sake of this video we'll be rushing through so as you can see here it tells you um, basic details about the course you can also go to the course page as well so a particular web page dedicated to this department and see what they say and of course you can apply through here remember you apply here for the course and for the scholarship you go to funding or financial aid and apply um, differently for this big funding we saw here so i hope that is clear so for the english requirements there's also good news there's also good news for the english requirements for undergrad students so it's written here that you are not required to submit proof of English language proficiency and English test scores if you have successfully completed or are in the process of successfully completing one of the following. So four full years of study in English in an accredited Canadian university or four full years of English in a high school where the primary language is English language. So I think most people would fall into this category where in your high school, the primary language is English language, so you don't have to submit the IELTS or the TOEFL. That's big good news. So please go for it if you um, are in this category. So let's go to graduate admissions. Let's go to master's and PhD. So we'll begin with the English requirements for master's and PhD opportunities at York University in Canada. So there's also good news. If you studied in an accredited university where English is the official language of instruction, you do not need to submit any of these English language tests. So that's also good. So if you studied in a country like Nigeria and Botswana, um, Jamaica and things like that, where English is the language of instruction, you wouldn't need to submit um, either the TOEFL or the IELTS or the other English test. So that's good that's out of the way. So what about funding? How do I fund my studies, master's, PhD at this University of York? Because as we know, international studies is very expensive. So there is more good news. So if you scroll down here, there are lots of info here about how to get funding. But this part of the website shows exactly the weight of the funding, what you'll be getting if you get into this university and if you get funding. So here it says Masters International, no TA. So Masters International Students, no TA means no teaching assistantships. So most funding for students 
in Canada and also in the US most times comes as um, teaching assistantships. So you help the department to teach students in undergrad or to help as a research assistant. And then you get tuition waiver and you get um, stipend and other benefits. So it says here that if you do not get, if you're admitted, but you do not get um, teaching assistantships, this is what the kind of funding you qualify for. So the department will give you a funding of 21,000 Canadian dollars. But this is quite small because you need, this is what you need for all your fees and every other thing. You can see here fees, supplementary fees, health plan, and the rest of them. So you need 20,954, close to 21,000. And the department is ready to give you 21,000 as well. So there is no like money for stipend or something. So as much as possible, you should try to get a TA position. That's a teaching assistantship position. And the best way to do so is to contact the department and see how you can get a teaching position. So you need probably the blessing of a professor, of a faculty member in the department you intend to apply to. So that person takes you um, takes you up as, a, as an assistant and then you get a teaching assistantship. We're talking more about that soon, but let's look at... Um, master's international students uh, with ta with teaching assistantship now you see the difference so if you have a teaching assistantship you can see what you qualify for and this is the total for the total you have over thirty-seven thousand canadian dollars that's a lot of money and this is your fees remember for your fees, you're getting them, um, you're paying 16,000. So to know what you have in your pocket as your stipend, just say this 37,000 minus the 16,000. The remainder is what you have in your pocket. So that's kind of a bit of a money. And of course, the other small grants here and there that you automatically qualify for um, if you get in. So this is close to like a 20, close to 20,000 Canadian dollars if you subtract um this from this so that's enough to cater for your living expenses so we're going to a phd phd international students so most phds already come with ta so there's no issue about that so this is phd what you receive in your first year second year phd from third year fourth year fifth year so these are the expenses 36,000, 36,000. And this is the fees you have to pay out of this 36,000. So you still have about 20 something thousand ish to um, hold body and soul together. So this is good. You still have close to 20,000 Canadian dollars. And then there might be other small automatic funding you qualify for here and there that would um, augment this one. So there's a lot of money at this university. So please take advantage. So of course, you, these are the, the different programs for masters and PhD. So you're meant to visit them and see the applications requirements and send a professor an email in one of these universities and say, hey, I'm interested in this um, course. This is my area of interest. I think it aligns with yours. Um, I would like to work under your tutorial. I would like your support for my application. And um, I must also say this for some for some students, they do not get responses from professors. So this is the anthropology department, for instance. So you find the applications requirements and other things you might need. And it's also a good idea to send an email to professors. But if you do not get a response, one good thing to do is actually to go through the, the head of department. So you go to the program page, check for the head of the department or the secretary and just pour out your heart to that person that I intend to apply for this course. I have a very good profile. I'm also looking for funding. Do you have suggestions on the professors I should contact? Or should I even contact professors in the first place? Because for some departments, if you have a good profile, they just match you themselves with the professor they think you can work with. So you do not need to contact professors. That's for some departments. So if it is not clear, if it is not written clearly, you might want to contact the head of department of the department secretary and clarify before you even contact any of the professors in the department. So it's good you read for the different department requirements. Where it is not clearly stated that you contact a professor, go through 
the department secretary or the head of the department and ask for how do I contact professors or do I need to contact professors? How do I get funding and other pressing issues such as that? So in case you need help on how to contact professors, there is a video on my channel already on how to write an email to a professor. So this is the um, video here how to contact professors for postgraduate opportunities. Of course, there are also other videos here on how to write like a um, statement of purpose, which you might be asked to do, or how to write a CV, academic CV, and things like that. So you have all the materials you need actually on this channel. So do not fret, I got you covered through and through. And that's it guys, I hope this was useful. Fully funded bachelors, as we've seen here, Masters and PhD opportunities at York University in Canada. There are also English waivers, as we also um, saw together. Um, before I go, um, application fees may apply. I don't know how much exactly, but most Canadian universities charge application fees. So do your own due diligence, find out and check. Um, the different application fees that might accrue to the course you're applying for. And until next time, guys, thanks for joining me today. We cannot wait to celebrate you. The application season is upon us. Start putting your documents together. Check the different deadlines as well so you're not caught on our ways. And I will see you at the top sooner than later. So bye-bye for now.